I think it's time to wrap things up. So, as with anything like this, there's so many variables and factors that it's going to be really hard for me to just give you just one overall winner. I'll try my best to do that, but it's going to be a qualified answer. So, honestly, what would be better is if you just watched all these videos and then took notes and then just pick, pick for yourself. Pick the one that, that suits your personal needs. But I'm still going to do a quick summary and tr just try to generalize some uh, a few meters that kind of stand out to me. Now, first off, let me qualify this. I believe that 95% of the people, maybe even more, that watch these videos are probably going to buy it and set it on their workbench and it's probably never going to measure voltages higher than their mains. And so in that case, you know, the crazy fluke style uh, in input protection probably isn't needed. So that being said, I think pretty much any one of these that uh, I reviewed in this 15 meter shootout is probably safe enough for what you'll be doing with it, I imagine. My meters have never measured anything higher than mains. Now. I've done some high voltage stuff with, I have a half ridge and Tesla coil kind of stuff, but you know, usually you have crazy voltage dividers, you measure that type of stuff through. So yeah, for, I, I honestly think that people kind of over, they overdo it a little bit with being hard on the the cheaper $50 meters for just regular bench use. I'm, I'm assuming you're going to be probing breadboard stuff, microcontroller stuff you know, logic level stuff. Nothing nothing that's really gonna ever matter as far as safety. So if that's the case, if, if that really is the case for you, then I can give you an overall winner and I would say that would probably be, and this is just being overall bang for the buck. Uh, just overall features, performance, accuracy, resolution, all that jazz, and even physical construction and feel, I think the UNI-T UT61E is easily the best overall winner if you're not going to go probing 1000 volt high energy panels with this or something. If you're going to be doing that, then you're not, you shouldn't even be watching these videos because if you're buying a $50 meter for doing that kind of stuff, then you're not, you don't put much value on your life. But um, that being said, I know, <laughs> I know Dave Jones has even made a video that says this is why UNI-T sucks, and, but I think that was the 70 series. I, I could have sworn he, in the, was it the $100 shootout or maybe it was the $50 one, he reviewed the D model and he seemed to kind of like it. But the E model annihilates the D model in specs. The D model I think is half a percent basic DC accuracy. The E model is 0.1% plus two counts. It's got a 22,000 count display resolution to go with that 0.1% accuracy and performance wise it is awesome and it, it measured pretty much dead on with everything and it's got the craziest measurement ca uh, capabilities. It'll do frequency to 220 megahertz. My Rigol two channel arbitrary waveform generator only goes to 160 megahertz so I couldn't even test its full capabilities. <laughs> Uh, it'll measure resistance to 220 mega ohms. It'll measure capacitance to 220,000 microfarad. I mean, just overall, it's, if, if you don't mind that it's from China and you're not going to be doing crazy high energy stuff, it's seriously, it's a no-brainer. It, it feels great in the hands. It doesn't creak or rattle. It's got ceramic fuses. It's not the super big thousand volt name brand ones, but you know, they're still ceramic and it's, you know, if, if it's just the power coming out of your bench power supply, it's really not going to matter. So that's if if you meet those conditions. Now if you can't stay in Chinese stuff and you need to get something that's European or American, um, I would say the Radio Shack. But you know, most of these are made in China, so that's the kind of tough thing when you say that. It's like, but I guess when it's an American or European manufacturer that has a Chinese manufacturer make it for them, they force them to make it to their standards, so I guess that does change things a little bit, but uh, as far as durability and ruggedness, if you have to have waterproof, dustproof, shockproof, then the only IP67 one in the group is the South Wire, and that's a no-brainer, and it was a, honestly a pretty good meter, I didn't have any complaints about it. Um, if you need a super safe one that's still pretty 
capable, I'd say probably the X-Tech or the Ampro would be good safe ones. Same with the Klein tools, but Klein, the Klein is only expensive and it was 65 on eBay, I think it was. But it feels pretty rugged too. Actually, and you know, the UEI, UEI had a pretty good soft rubber surround to it that felt pretty good, so I don't know. It's I'm just really wasting my breath because obviously you'll just pick what you want out of the group and then it'll be good. But let me let me run through each of the meters and then I'll give you my super quick summary on each meter. So Amprobe, good reputable name brand and that's important. So I imagine it's got a warranty probably, I don't know for a fact. Uh, it performed well. It's got a flashlight built into it. Uh, it's true RMS. Uh, it's a good it's a good meter. I don't have any complaints. BK feel and durability wise feels the worst out of all of them. It feels like plastic cheap crap. That being said though, like I said earlier, most of the people probably looking to buy these, you know, they're just going to set it on their workbench and it's probably not going to take enough abuse for the durability to really matter. But that being said, if even without discussing durability though, this is pretty lacking for the money. Um, it can't do capacitance, it can't measure frequency, it doesn't have a backlight, it doesn't have a relative button, it doesn't do min-max. Um, it's only 4,000 counts, so even at 5 volts you're already down to two decimal places. It's just, uh, the other meters just offer a lot more bang for the buck than this BK. And, it, and if at least it felt decent, I'd be more inclined to throw my money at them, but uh, it's just something about this meter I just don't like. Just doesn't feel like I'm getting my money's worth, I guess. Circuit test. And if I had to, if there were one here that I said just don't buy, it's the circuit test. It can't even do milliamps or microamps. And I didn't, it, part of that's my fault for even buying it without paying attention to that. But it's just got the worst feeling rain switch by far. I mean, it is horrendous. Surely I got a lemon. If, they are, if they're all that bad, that's scary. And it's just not... Great, I just found tons of little things about it that I just did not like. And it wasn't that the one that had the super thick letters? I don't remember. Or numbers. Or digits, I guess. I don't know. But it's also the most expensive besides the Fluke. But the Fluke's a wild card, so it's intentionally expensive. But that being said, this is the most expensive one and probably the least capable next to the Innova. So I, can, I just I don't think I can recommend the Circuit Test at all for any, any case at all. X-Tech, name brand, owned by FLIR. You can depend on them being pretty reliable, I'd imagine. Um, it felt pretty rugged, has a good surround on it, and it was a good performer. I really don't have any complaints about it. Baby Fluke, it's an interesting one. Um, probably if, if you had to pick one of these meters and your life had to depend on it, I'd say this Fluke, even though it's their baby model, I would still put it ahead of all 14 other meters in this shootout. It's but, you know, it's it's expensive for how little it does. It, it can't do milliamps or microamps. It doesn't do millivolts. Um, the capacitance range is crap. It only does 100 microfarad. Um, no relative function. It doesn't even have a, a real built-in kickstand. It uses that smart cover type thing. And it's, it's lacking in a lot of ways. But it is you do get the fluke quality and the things we did measure like voltage and current and stuff i mean it's dead on so well, i guess not current it couldn't do the current but like the voltage and the resistance it was all dead on so it's definitely the most accurate as <laughs> fluke always does that they'll give it a modest accuracy rating and then when you actually go to use it you find that it's actually a lot more accurate than what they advertise not, you know a lot of manufacturers get it right inside the tolerance windows of it being within spec and then they ship it out Fluke gets it right in the center, and it's, yeah, you gotta love them for that, but it's expensive. Hold Peak, uh, junk, don't buy it. Granted, I, I got in contact with the eBay seller that I bought this from, and if they'll replace it, they, they wanted picture proof, so I hooked it up to my voltage reference and then put my Fluke 87.5 next to it, which is reading 50000 and um, said, there's your proof. And then they haven't responded yet, so I'll let you know with a follow-up video if they uh, return it. But if, if, it, if they send me another one and it works fine, on paper, it's, it's got pretty good specs. If you couldn't get the Radio Shack one wherever you live, then this would be a good alternative. It's 
25 bucks true RMS and has all those different features and actually it's a pretty good measurement range for all the different ranges actually so and huge display so it could be good it but the one I got doesn't work so kind of makes you think about their uh, quality control Innova don't get it there's no reason to get it over any of the other ones in this range uh, it's just, it just can't do anything. And it was kind of the wild card. I got it just to see, you know, because you could say $50. Well, what if I want to get a meter for $25? Well, there you go. That's what you would get, and it's not worth it. Klein. I just, I think it's the best looking meter out of the bunch, and it just feels the toughest. Uh, something about it, I'm just drawn to it. Just the quality of the plastic on the front. It just, you can just tell it's made of quality. And it actually performed pretty well. And it has by far the best display out of all of them. So if you want a good American name brand that electricians trust and you want it to feel manly and tough, uh, this is the right meter for you, I think. Um, price, price is a little on the higher end, 64 39 is what I paid. But but uh, honestly, I'm really happy with the meter. I like it a lot. Uh, the good old Radio Shack. Uh, I've had this one for a while. I included it because it's in the right price range. You can get it on Amazon for 23 five dollars are on eBay for 27 I think so obviously super cheap um, if capacitance range isn't an issue it's easily by far the best bang for the buck um, well it, it'd be a close one obviously the U unity ut 61 e is way better performance but it's also twice the price this is 25 this 61 e is 50 so if you want to say in the $25 range, this is easily the best bang for the buck. But capacitance range is only like 80 or 60 microfarad or something, which is worthless. So if that wasn't a big deal and you had a really low budget, this would probably be the one I would recommend. Uh, the only other one in this price range would be the Hold Peak, and obviously I had some issues with mine, so yeah. Southwire. Only one that's IP67. It felt really rugged and tough. And honestly, I, th I think it's an X-Tech rebrand. It looks a lot like the X-Techs. And even the PCB reminded me of one, so I don't know if it is or not. If someone knows, post in the comments and let us know. But I have a sneaking suspicion that it is related to the x -Tex. But uh, yeah, I have no major complaints about it. It is actually a pretty good meter. And price-wise, it was 55 so it was right in the middle. Tech Power. There's the Digi a Digitech version that's basically the same exact thing, it's just a rebrand and uh, people love it. It's got tons of great features for the money and it's probably the cheapest meter you can get that does AC plus DC true RMS. Um, downside is there's no way to turn that off. It's always doing the uh, removing the DC offset so and it doesn't have a dual display so you only get the AC part and eh. It's a decent meter though for the money and I didn't really have any major complaints that I can remember. If this didn't have the weird problems like the Hold Peak did, it would actually be pretty decent. It had probably the best looking input protection, to be honest. It had the huge isolation slots with the plastic case protruding through it like the Fluke does. It had two huge 1,000 thousand, thousand volt rated uh, high rupture capacity ceramic fuses. It had five PTCs. I mean, it, it was looked like it was just built to be tough input protection wise. But it gets ruined by the fact that I get a lemon and there's something wrong with it. So I'll get in contact with the seller and if they can replace it for me, I'll do an updated video and yeah. Unity 61D. Uh, no complaints. This one has a backlight. And if you can't get the E model in your country, this would be a good alternative. Uh, to me, this is the overall winner, if assuming you don't have to do any crazy high energy, high voltage crap. So just workbench type stuff, it's seriously hard to beat this for the money. $49 and you get a 22,000 count meter with 0.1% plus 2 count accuracy. And the measurement ranges are insane and it's got a quick update rate, auto ranging is quick. Only thing, it doesn't have a backlight, but it does data logging and it comes with the software and the cable. So yeah, it's a... Uh, it's a great little meter. I have no problems with it. Maybe in the past they had quality control issues, but the one I have, I looked inside and all the components are good quality. Uh, the SMD parts are actually, you know, they're all straight on their pads. They're not all crooked. Um, everything looked nice. It seems like they've improved their quality if, if that's the case. So, good meter. 
UTL. Uh, honestly, it's a, it's a it's a good little good little meter. It's a little high, higher in the price range. It was 60, and it's not true RMS. So, yeah, if you don't need true RMS, this would be a decent one. That's small and rugged because it is one of the smaller ones. But that being said, it's not true RMS, and it, I don't think there's really any reason to get one that's not true RMS when you can get all these other ones that are in the same price range that are. That being said, though, it's a really awesome uh, backlight, if that counts for anything. And when we did voltage and uh, resistance measurements, I, I remember this one being uh, pretty dead on, so that's good, too. So, yeah, that's it. Uh, that was a ton of work. I, I expected it to be a lot of work, but I still completely underestimated it. So hats off to Dave Jones and all the other people out there who've done these uh, multimeter shootouts and stuff. It is a lot of work. Um, and another reminder, I have no bias, no sway. I bought every one of these out of pocket. And if anyone wants proof, I will pull up all my invoices, obviously block my address and stuff out, but I'll show you. Um, I did buy these out of pocket and just to help the community because there are a ton of multimeters out there in the $50 range and it'd be hard to pick. And while Dave Jones' video is awesome, it's five years old now, and it's actually not as relevant because, I mean, look at all these. They're all true RMS, and so hopefully someone finds this helpful, even if I help one person, and that's good enough. And if you would like to help me recoup some of the... How much did I spend? I had to spend... It had to have been like five or $600. If you want to help me recoup some of that, just uh, hit the old thumbs up button, and that's all you got to do. It doesn't cost you a penny. And I know I never asked that, but... In this case, I did spend a lot of money on this video. A lot of money that could have gone towards buying a nice new, a nice new fancy top end meter. But I did think I, I did enjoy doing this, so it's not like I did. I'm, this is a complete loss or anything. I like doing this kind of thing, and I like helping people. So yeah, and like I said, um, I'm gonna do an individual review of every one of these meters with more details. Um, the unboxing and all that kind of stuff will be in those videos. I'll be uploading those after. Uh, I upload every one of the parts of this shootout. And then, after all those are done, then I'll be done with them and I can destroy them. So, I'm not going to intentionally destroy them, but I'll do drop tests on all of them. I'll do mains on ohms range and, and I'll um, use my insulation tester to send them up to 1,000 volts, or at least the ones that are rated to 1,000, see if they survive, and uh, do stuff like that. So, that'll be coming way later. Got tons of other videos lined up, but they're piling up because this multimeter shootout's been taking so long. I think it's been like a one month process already. I bought them all, but like two of them or so, or three of them came from China, so they, it's like two weeks later they showed up, and then once it came, it just took a lot longer than I thought, so. <sighs> and I'm long-winded, I like to blabber and geek out about this nerdy stuff, so. <laughs> yeah, well, don't go too hard on me. This is my first shootout video, and I'm definitely not Dave Jones, so... Anyways, I will uh, see you in the next video.